What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a crazy wide receiver move that you can learn to get you a ton of separation on your routes. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things, fellas. But also, if you're a wide receiver and you guys want to know the exact drills you should be emphasizing this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below for our 28-day on-field wide receiver workout plan. What you'll get access to is a 28-day schedule that you can follow with step-by-step -step drills, with sets, reps, and video examples of each drill explaining how to do it. This is going to help your guys route running, your press releases, your hands, the works improve. So check out that very first link below if you are interested, fellas. Let's get started with this video. So now, the first move that I want to talk about here is attacking a DB's blind spot. So there are a couple different ways that you can attack a DB's blind spot. Number one, when a DB is in zone coverage, what would his blind spot be? His blind spot would be this area over here where he cannot see. Usually a DB in zone coverage like so, he gives up some kind of area, right? He gives up this area behind him. That is what we would call the blind spot. It's essentially an area where he cannot see. So if I'm working any type of route that is inside breaking, I love to attack the blind spot of this DB. So let's watch this route from CD Lamb. This is a textbook way to attack the blind spot. He closes the space with him. He does a vertical set inside, attacks the blind spot, and is able to get a ton of space on this route. So let's talk about why he does that. So any route that I run, right? So let's say it's a comeback. Let's say it's a post. Number one thing, and everybody should know this, that I have to sell or that I have to make the DB think is what? I have to make him think it's a fade. Everything is a fade until it's not a fade, right? But there are more creative ways to do that other than just running hard, running in full stride, and running in good pad with good pad level, which all are very important. But there are some other things that you can do, and that is a move called a vertical set. So when we're running a fade route versus zone coverage, what should my game plan be? My game plan should be to close the distance, have some speed, have a good pad level, running hard. All of those things I need to make sure that I'm doing. And if I were to be running a fade, I would want to give him a jab inside and sell like I am actually running a post. Sell with my hips and shoulders, step to the inside, because that can get this DB to maybe crash down, which sets up something behind him so I can get around him and run that fade. Have some space, get a couple steps on him. So I can use that to my advantage on other routes like a post, a dig maybe, maybe sometimes a comeback. And we're going to talk about those in a second. So he gives this vertical set to the inside, accelerates to the blind spot of the DB. That is where the blind spot comes into play. Because now this DB is thinking, oh crap, he's running a fade. Maybe he speed turns, maybe he opens up, maybe he widens. But guess what that does? That creates a bigger window for myself and a bigger window for my quarterback when running this post. Now you might ask, well, why wouldn't I just run the post? That seems like a very, very fancy way. I don't need to do that. Why couldn't I just run the post and cut in front of him? Because he's outside leverage anyways. Because when you're running a post route versus zone coverage, chances are this is probably like what? Probably like cover three, right? So a DB's mindset in cover three, he's got a free safety in the middle of the field. That means that the middle of the field is usually closed. Quarterbacks are taught do not throw over the middle in cover three because that single high safety can make a play. So he'll make a play if a wise a wide receiver, we just take off and go run it because he'll be right on my hip pocket, force me to his safety, and the quarterback's going to have a tiny ass window. But if I come up to him and I can threaten his leverage, threaten his blind spot, that can widen him, which guess what? Creates a bigger window for my quarterback. And when I make this catch, I don't got to worry about this safety taking my head off or picking the ball off because I did my job with my stem. I made it look like a fade. I used that vertical set to even make it look like a fade even more. And I still attacked his blind spot. Off the line, could you just run at his blind spot? For sure. You could definitely just run at his blind spot, try to widen him and break underneath. This is just a more creative way to do so. Now, another thing that I want to mention here, fellas, this move is based off of what? Like, what does this look a lot like until this point, until he breaks on the post? That looks a lot like a fade route against zone coverage. So maybe, fellas, if you're playing a team that runs a lot of zone, and let's say you're backside, and on run plays, your job is maybe to just get the corner out of there, run him off, why not work a vertical set? Why not try to set up the post? Why not try to set up different routes that all can build off of that vertical set, rather than just being lazy and just trying to run around him? Set things up. You have to be a calculated salesman when you are a wide receiver. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Lamb making this route look like a fade route versus zone coverage and then ultimately attacking that blind spot. So now you can also attack the blind spot. Now I personally love the blind spot when it's outside leverage, when it's outside shade zone, outside shade off man, outside shade press. I love the blind spot against that because I feel like it's the most threatening to a DB. 
So can you use it when he's inside shade? Yes, and we're going to talk about that. But this is a great example of another way to threaten the blind spot by doing something called a fake throw-by move. So let's play this full speed. This wide receiver does an inside release. He does like he's faking underneath, threatens the blind spot of the DB, and is able to get separation. So when I got a DB who's an outside shade press, and that's why he took the inside release, because he's not going to force the release. He's not going to force the outside release into outside leverage. So he threatens him with his move, takes the inside release. This is the blind spot of the DB, right? Just like if he was inside shade and he was turned this way, this would be the blind spot of the DB. So you can threaten the blind spot when it's press coverage as well. So he goes up to the top of the route. Now, how would you guys run an out route in this situation? If you had to run a five to 10 yard out and that DB is right on your hip, what would you do? You would take that inside hand, you'd put it on the back of the shoulder or the back of the hip of the DB and you would slip under and run like it, run the out route giving your quarterback plenty of space to throw you open because you didn't try to force the outside release. So that's what we want to make it look like. Just like how on the last route, yes, we want to sell fade, but we are also attacking his blind spot on this. I want to sell out route, but I'm also attacking his blind spot. So when he makes this break point, he acts like he's going to throw him by. He puts the hand on the back of his elbow. It could be the back of the shoulder or the hip if he's maybe a little bit closer. And he puts the brakes on and gives a jab to that blind spot that threatens the db that makes the db think about it he's thinking about that out route for a second and just that little hesitation can give me space over the middle especially when it's man coverage fellas because chances are when it's outside shade press out of the slot he probably has some kind of help to the inside so if we just take off and go run then guess what's going to happen? We're going to run right into that safety help. Just like that last example with zone coverage. Just because it's outside shade press doesn't mean the responsibilities of outside leverage change. Just like if it's outside leverage zone, he probably has help inside. Outside shade press, he probably has help inside. Trying to take away the outside. So let's threaten him there to make a bigger window and an easier job for my quarterback. So let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver faking that throw by and showcasing us the second way that you can threaten the blind spot of a DB. So now, we're also going to be talking about this way of threatening a blind spot of a DB, and that is with an outside breaking route. So this is a creative way to attack the blind spot and to run an outside breaking route. I would equate this, you could do this on a comeback, a, um, you do this on a comeback, a corner, or an out route. This specific example is an out route. I like to think of it as a comeback, but it's, it's the same, or not this specific example is a comeback, but I like to think of using this as if it were on a comeback. That's probably my favorite one. So if I got outside leverage coverage like we see here, and I got to run a 10 yard out, most important thing is giving my QB space after I make my break to lead me and throw me open right? Or just, just give him space to hit me, right? So if I force this release versus this outside leverage coverage, and I just try to run around him, and let's say this DB gets hands on me and forces me to the outside and I break and he's right on my hip pocket and I don't have that much sideline space to work with, quarterback ain't going to throw me the ball. So I got to make sure that I give him space to lead me. And so attacking the blind spot is a great way to do that after you attack the inside shoulder and the inside hip, just like that post route. But instead of running underneath and running a post, you slip out and run it out. So let's play at full speed. So he comes out, he attacks the inside shoulder, vertical set, gets to the blind spot, and then breaks it off on the out route. So fellas, it is literally the exact same thing as that post example that we had with CD Lamb. But instead of him running a post and cutting under, he runs an out route and goes to the out. So it's the same idea. So he attacks his inside shoulder. He uses that move called a vertical set, right? He gives that jab to the inside. DB right now is thinking that this is a fade. He is attacking him, giving him a move inside to try to slip behind him and win that foot race on a fade. That's what he is thinking, right? So that's what we have to make it look like, or that's what we want to make it look like. So now when we burst up to this blind spot, a big mistake, because that's where he's at right now. He is in the blind spot of Marcus Peters. A big mistake that wide receivers will make is they will go to what? So they will be doing this, like, let's say this is on the outside, not in the slot. They'll do this type of move. They'll jab to the inside, threaten him with a post, and then they try to go run a comeback, but they take a wide stem and break it off. And they don't give enough space for the QB, and they get to the depth too fast. They don't get vertical, which means the quarterback is not ready for them to get there yet. And then guess what? DB has time to recover. And we don't get the ball. So after we make that vertical set move, we have to try to get skinny. We want to try to be hip to hip with this DB because that's what's going to make him to open up and think fade. But also it gives, still gives me that space, which is the whole reason I'm doing this move in the first place. So he breaks this thing right off and gives that quarterback plenty of space with separation from the DB to win on this out route. That's a textbook job 
they're attacking the blind spot on an outside breaking route. Is this the only way you can run the route? No, absolutely not. He could have just attacked the inside shoulder of this DB and hip, got him to open up, and then slip underneath him, which is totally fine. This is just a more creative way of doing that exact same thing and giving your QB space. If you're uncomfortable with attacking the inside shoulder and probably having to throw him by and slip underneath. So let's play this again, full speed one more time. Great job of this wide receiver using that vertical set, getting to the blind spot, and then breaking it off while getting skinny on this play. Okay, so now another example here I want to talk about with attacking this blind spot is mainly um, Amari Cooper not using a vertical set, more so using his stem to get to the blind spot. So it doesn't always have to be off of a vertical set move. You could also use your stem to be able to get to the blind spot of the DB. So let's watch this. He's going to be running this like kind of bender across the field against outside leverage zone coverage. So he could easily just go run the bender, but that's going to put that DB right on his hip pocket. He's not going to get separation. He's not going to widen him, which is what we want on a bender. We want, is, we want to get just maybe even two steps on a DB, and that means I should easily be able to win. So let's play at full speed. He comes off here, he stems to the inside, and then he works to the blind spot of the DB to widen him. That space that he has right there at the very end of this thing, that is all we need when we're running a crosser, when we're running a bender, when we're running a post. Quarterbacks should be able to put that in front of me. So you see, he doesn't really use a vertical set. He just kind of stems to the inside. Eyes are to the inside, hips and shoulders to the inside. He's going right at that DB's inside shoulder to get him to move, to get him to commit, to get him to run hard because that makes him more susceptible to that blind spot. And that is exactly how you would run a deep 10-yard out or a deep maybe even 15-yard out against outside leverage zone. Pairing your routes and pairing your releases together, fellas. That's what all great wide receivers are able to do. They make things look similar. So he attacks that inside shoulder. He gets that DB to flip his hips. And then now what does he do? Slips to the blind spot, making it look like this DB has no idea where he is at, making it look like an out route, a corner route, a stop route, comeback route, whatever it is. And that gets him more space and gets him a couple yards of space on this bender route. So fellas, you could use a vertical set to get that DB to crash. You can use your stem. You just have to make sure that your routes look somewhat similar when you are building off of this vertical set move. Let's play this again, full speed one more time. Great job by Cooper attacking inside shoulder, getting to that blind spot, and widening that DB. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys as usual. And if you would like a one month long wide receiver on field workout schedule, everything you can do as a wide receiver to improve your route running, releases, hands, the works, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.